Welcome to a new Java EE tutorial. This tutorial is about implementing the Java authorization contract for containers, shortened JACC. JACC permits an easy way to implement authentication for a custom web application. Glassfish already includes some templates for JACC which are implemented in the security rooms. I will show you how to create such a realm and configure it uh, to use with a database. It's also possible to use the security rooms with uh, LDAP or file authentication, but I will show I will only show the JDBC authentication. So let's get started. We uh, need yeah first we need to extend our database we created in the previous tutorial. So I'll show you here. This was the GTube database with a single table called TUser and we need to extend this with a second column. This column will be password. We make this a length of 64 because we will use an SHA-256 to hash our passwords. So this is not now. And we can say apply. Now we need a second uh, table which is called user t username. This is our ID. And now we need a column username and a column group name. All those may not be null and we say apply. This table will be used to read all the groups of a user and those groups, yeah, you can uh, ask JACC if a user is in a specific role. You have a role to group mapping. What uh, this exactly mean? Yeah, you will see this when we start configuring our application. And this table with the users and later on the passwords. This table will be used for the authentication, not for the authorization. You, yeah, password will check if the username exists and the password matches. Uh, then it's returns true, you can are logged in, you get a session and uh, the username is set so you can get the group from this table which is also uh, automatically passed by Glassfish. We'll now we will set this user a uh, password. So to do this we uh, need an SHA256 password so you can just get some online uh, get generator for this. There are many around. I won't post a, a specific one here. Just Google it. You will find a lot. So I use the password. Just take the password test, which uh, got this hash value. I will just add this. So now I would be able to authenticate myself with John Doe and the password test but I need to get my groups, my permissions as well so uh, I will copy this from here and I'll put it here and say this is an admin whatever right so so now we would be able to log in with John Doe and Glassfish automatically would give uh, this user the group admin. What this group will mean later, that if it admin, or I could or also write whatever in this. This is really, uh, this doesn't matter what it's in here. It's just, uh, you just have to, you will define it in the config files of the Glassfish later. So the database is ready. We go into our application. Or well, first we go to our server. So localhost four eight four eight. Yes, and we have our JDBC connection pools. The G GTube 
db and the YouTube JDBC resource. We will need this JNDI name. I will copy it. And now we need to go down here, configurations, server config. Be sure you are in server config, not in default config. Then security, realms. Click on this. And you already have some realms here a file realm, certificate realm, and another file realm. We will create a new one. So we enter JDBC realm here. This is the name we called it from our application. And here we have to enter JDBC realm. If we don't do this, we uh, have to modify some configuration file I will show you. You need to go into your Glassfish domain directory, open the domain, switch into the config folder. In this folder you find a login.conf file which uh, has this content on default and there you see JDBC realm which is the name we give this realm so it's loaded on default required and if you call it somehow other you copy this line just switch this name to whatever you want and save the file mm, you will need to restart Glassfish as well so the JNDI name is uh, our JDBC resource name JDBC slash YouTube our user table is T user the username column is username and password is password uh, password column is password so this relies on this table here where we have our username password from our t user table and now we need our group table which is t user group and this is our username column it's called username and group name which uh, which is defined here in our t username username group name this has to be inserted here so then one more important field is the digits algorithm which is default SHA 256 this is why we generated this hash and because it's the def default one we don't need to change anything here so we say OK. Security realm. Alright, oh it's it's down here, it's not uh, right now on this list. I guess we have to restart the server as well. But it's here so it's saved correctly. I will just do a restart. Server is back up and now we will check oh, here still not in the list, but it's here and uh, this should be fine. Maybe it's just a bug that it's not shown up right. Now we can start uh, adding the configuration to our application. So we now switch into our web XML and add we will add a login config here this login config requires an authentication mode which is form. Form means we create a side uh, web page with a form on it where user puts in his username and his password. There are some other methods too, uh, something like basic where you just have this uh, pop-up from your browser which asks you for uh, entering the login information also. But this is the way we use here we give him the real name which is JDBC realm or if you called it something else you need to enter the, uh, the different name here JDBC realm and now we create a form lock income which you need because we entered here a form this uh, says the login page is the page which is automatically opened if you have to log in for accessing a specific site. 
we will call this login dot x html oh, sorry and we need also to create a form error page which uh, is called uh, which is opened if the login yeah didn't succeed it if yeah there are many possibilities f if the user took the wrong password if he don't have access to this site now if he don't have access then he would get another error message but if he enters the wrong uh, credentials he wouldn't he would come to this error page and this is basically all we need to configure for uh, implementing the login